ಶ್ರೀಭಗವಾಚ ಮಯ್ಯಾಸಕ್ತ ಪಾಥ ಯೋಗ ಯುಂಜನ್ಮದಾಶ್ರಯ ಅಸಂಶಯ ಸಮಗ್ರಸಿ ತಕ್ಷುನು ಜ್ಞಾನ ತೇಹಂ ಸ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಇದೇಷತ ಯಜ್ಞಾತ್ವಾಹೂಯೋನ್ಯಾತವ್ಯಮವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಮನುಷ್ಯಾಸ್ರೇಷು ಕಶ್ಚಿಧ್ಯತತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಸಿಚಿನ್ಮಾಂತಿ ತತ್ವತ ಭೂಮಿರಾಪೋ ನಲೋ ವಾಯು ಖಂ ಮನೋ ಬುಧಿರೇವ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಇಮೇ ಭಿನ್ನ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿರಷ್ಟೇಯಮಿತ್ವನ್ಯಾಂ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ವಿಧಿ ಮೇ ಪರ ಜೀವಭೂತ ಮಹಾಬಾಹೋ ಯೇದಂ ಧಾರ್ಯತೆ ಜಗತ್ ಏತೋನೀ ಭೂತ ಸರ್ವಾಪಧಾರಯ ಅಹಂ ಕೃತ್ಸ್ನ ಜಗತ ಪ್ರಭವ ಪ್ರಲಯಸ್ತ ಮತ್ತ ಪರತರ ನಾಣ್ಯ ಕಿಂಚಿದಸ್ತಿ ಧನಂಜಯ ಮಯಿ ಸರ್ವಿದ ಪ್ರೋತ್ತ ಸೂತ್ರ ಮಣಿಗಣಾಯಿ ರಸೋಹಮಪ್ಸು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಪ್ರಭಾಸ್ಮಿ ಶಶಿ ಸೂರ್ಯೋ ಪ್ರಣವ ಸರ್ವೇದೇಶು ಶಬ್ದೇ ಪೌರುಷಂ ನೃಷು ಪುಣ್ಯೋ ಗಂಧ ಪೃಥಿವ್ಯಾಸ್ಮಿ ವಿಭಾವಸೌ ಜೀವನ ಸರ್ವೂತು ತಪಶ್ಚಾಸ್ಮಿ ತಪಸ್ವಿಷು ಬೀಜ ಮಾಂ ಸರ್ವೂತ ವೇಧಿ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಸನಾತನ ಬುಧಿರ್ಬುಧಿಮತಾಮಸ್ಮಿ ತೇಜಸ್ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾಮಹಂ ಹರಿಂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ we'll take up the the third verse please manushyanam sahasreshu kashchidyatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam ಕಶ್ಚಿನ್ಮಾಂ ವೀತಿ ತತ್ವತ ಮನುಷ್ಯಾಂ ಸಹಸ್ರೇಷು ಕಶ್ಚಿಧ್ಯತತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧೇ ಯತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂ ಕಶ್ಚಿನ್ಮಾಂ ವೀತಿ ತತ್ವತ ವೆರಿ ಫೇಮಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಕೇಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಮನುಷ್ಯಾಂ ಸಹಸ್ರೇಷು ಅಮಂಗ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆನ್ ಕಶ್ಚಿತ್ ಸಮ್ವನ್ ವೆರಿ ರೇರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈವ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಸಿದ್ಧೇ ಸಿದ್ಧೇ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಯತತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧೇ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈವ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ 
of those who strive and succeed, the rare one knows me in a sense. Yatata mapi siddhanam kaschin maam veti tattvataha. Tattvataha means in essence, in totality, fully, completely, entirely. Yes, ma. Among thousands of men, a very rare, scarce one strikes for perfection. In fact, it's very sad to know what he's saying. Very, very sad to know. It is very demoralizing <laughs> that nobody is interested in seeking the truth. Nobody wants to pursue the truth. Nobody's interested in me. The self, you must understand, when the Lord speaks, it's the self is speaking as it were. The truth is speaking to us and he's saying, nobody's interested in seeking me. Hardly anybody among thousands. It's only subjective. Among thousands, it's figurative rather. Thousands of men, scarce one strives for perfection. And what does it tell? It only tells at the state of humanity. What level in general mankind is. That they are not able to elevate their thoughts to the highest level possible. They're not able to elevate their thoughts to attune to the self or the reality. So in fact, you find that those people who are deprived of bread, deprived of shelter, deprived of education, you may feel sorry for them that they are not provided for. They don't have the opportunity. They don't have the education. They don't have exposure to have access to this truth or this knowledge. But then what about those selected, elite, educated, successful people? They are actually groping in darkness. Amongst the highest educated people, the most graduates, they have triple graduate, they have, they've done doctorates, they have got very celebrated positions they hold, they have all that they can ask for, and yet they themselves are not able to raise to the level of aspiring the truth or the self. You only feel very sympathetic. You only feel very sorry for them that they are not able to rise to the level, which is what he's saying. Among thousands of men, scarce one strives for perfection. And if at all you come across someone who even considers to strive for perfection, of them, he says, very rare, one knows me in essence. Yatata mapi siddhanam kaschin maam veti tattvataha. Tattvataha means in essence, one who, one who becomes that self. Means one who attains self-realization. The word tattvataha, tattva in essence, only indicating one who becomes the self, one who attains self-realization is even rare. Now in the course of my life, in the course of people knowing me, knowing my family, everyone, 
without an exception, would all would have praised me and more so the family for having embarked on this journey. And that too, only son you have and you put him into this philosophy, into this spirituality. They think that what I have done, the part I've chosen, it's not common. I'm sure you'll agree. How many of you come across people who choose this as their purpose and purpose of life? Not many, hardly anybody. So hardly anybody even considers to pursue it. Isn't that a sad thing? It is a very, very demoralizing feeling. I don't know, if you, if you really get into the feel and the spirit of the verse, there will be some mourners here. You will be ready to shed a tear or two, but I don't see anybody mourning. In fact, I see all of you are smiling. I don't understand. What, Redigaru? I am telling you must moan and you are laughing and smiling. And huh? this is very, very, you're not being true to the teacher on the teacher's day, sir. Pradhan very, Guruji. very bad. Pradhan Guruji, I, I am absolutely at, true to the Guru. At, at least on teacher's day, you should do what the teacher tells you. Yes, because I'm I did not. Huh? Sorry, sorry, Guruji. I'm just reflecting. You are the rare. When men rare, one strive. I said, it's not in thousands. You are one in million. That's where I just got a love to grasp <laughs> me, not for the, any other reason. <laughs> no, no, no. I know, I know, I know. It's just that. I, as you as you rightly said that, we were in a totally different world. We rarest, rare we found across the people who I think, I think all gratitude to your uh, father who has been inspired you in putting you and uh, your courageous uh, step in leading in this, I think is amazing to understand. Definitely this applies, this uh, shloka, 100% dedicated to you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 it, it, please, please don't say that. It's not dedicated to me. It only just highlights the the, yes. the state of humanity, isn't it? And, I, and it's a very, very um, bleak situation. And he's very objective when he says that. He's just That's mentioning a matter of fact. So majority of people in the world, and I'm saying those who are best in their, in society. Think of who you consider as your role models or your gurus or those who have impacted the society and they want to transform the society. They are leaders of the industry. They, you find their thoughts are very, very shallow. Their thoughts are very gross. So the real growth or maturity of a person is measured by how high or how lofty can your thoughts be? See, yesterday, um, isn't it, it is interesting observation. I'm not criticizing. I'm just trying to connect. Yesterday, um, a few of us in the evening had uh, an invitation and a few of us were there at a, at, a, at a gathering. A chosen few were invited and we were there, we respected that. And those who were with me were trying to introduce me to people. Obviously with, uh, with great joy and happiness, you know, this is Guruji. Obviously, I was not in my uniform, you know. So, but traditionally, uh, I was wearing a kurta, but obviously not in a spiritual uniform because it did not augur me to be presentable that way there. However, they introduced me as someone who is a spiritual person who has devoted so much amount of his time and blah, blah, blah. Of the people who I told, I could only acknowledge one person. Easily 15, 10 to 15 people were introduced. One person stood up and took note and said, wow, you say that this man wants to reach self-realization? That's something. 
that's very rare. I, I can recall only one person acknowledged. The rest of them, Namaskaram, Namaskaram, lovely meeting you. Pass. You are just one amongst the many for them. Even when you are told that there's something like this that is being done, there is someone I am associating with. You want to share it. Hardly anybody are takers. There are no takers. I don't know, Vasantama, do you, do you, uh, Redigaru, I'm sure you will understand this. Yes, yes I agree. I fully understand, Guruji. I fully understand. I, I, I think we the world of affairs. I think uh, most probably, unless you have a tilak and you have ropes, unless you have an uh, orange uh, dress and with malas, most probably, then most probably, Sastranga Pramanam could all be happened. <laughs> no, that, I'm that not, I'm not really recognizing the Guruji. See the current word. Sorry to mention. <laughs> yeah, it is not the gab. Obviously, obviously, the gab uh, uh, is that which makes you stand out. But uh, uh, but I was but, not expecting any kind of uh, a reception. I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I'm only trying. How many people are mentally attuned to this frequency? See, a person who's attuned to this frequency can come down to others' level. But interesting, they can't come to come to your level. That's true. That's absolutely true. So a teacher can come down to any level, but the student cannot <laughs> rise. Others, a layman cannot rise up to the level what a, a student or, or a teacher is. You know, and it's a, it's a, and if you understand it, you feel sorry for them. That's all I'm saying. And I, I throughout my life, this is what I've I've been uh, experiencing. You know, even not. Uh, so you have justified why you are smiling, Reddy Garu. Yes, Guruji. <laughs> See, even now you are smiling. I tell you, I tell you, I'm telling you, must shed a tear and you all are smiling away, I tell you. Take the things that it comes, Guruji. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, no, no. I'm a lot to learn from you, sir. Yes. No, no. <laughs> right. So you know, even yesterday, uh, there was another context. I was actually trying to pass a piece of advice. It's so difficult to communicate. It's very, very difficult to, to lend your ears, to receive something from other person's perspective. It's very, very difficult. Almost, it's like shutters are down and I'm not ready for anything. This is what my life is. This is where I am. This is where I stand. It is, they, you don't leave any opportunity for growth. That's a sad part of it, you know? You know? And, and Vasantama, not to mention names or references, but you'll remember and you'll understand what exactly I'm saying. I don't know whether you are mindful. In what you were trying, you were trying to tell, you were trying to introduce me to some somebody, a lady, and you were having a conversation. She said something about me. We were sitting across the table. Huh? She was telling about me, and she said, Namaskar. And then she quickly switched the topic to something else. As if, thank you, it doesn't interest me. And Vasantama tried second time. Second time also she, she you know, in test match, they leave the ball, you know. I don't want, the, the batsman will say, I don't want to do anything with the ball, you know. That the, the best game she played, I have nothing to do with it. And I was just quietly sitting and watching. <laughs> Sorry for that, Guruji. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm only trying to relate to the realities of life. Even I not felt at all. Bad, uh, Guruji. I, felt I, bad I would bad. like to share one thing, Guruji, whether you heard or not. When I introduced you to another gentleman, he was asking whether you are our yoga master. Yes, one of them asked, one of them asked me, she, that lady herself asked me, yoga teacher. So at least I'm qualified to be a yoga teacher, at least, Ilya. To that extent, they find me fit enough, isn't it? Uh, no, I felt no. bad that time only. No, 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 not at all. In fact, it is not to trigger any of such sentiments. It's only trying to understand how people are unable to attune to seek the truth, seek the higher, you know? So the first line is applies to all seekers, the general practice, the general humanity that 
as uh, Redigar would say, when he said thousands, millions, you know, so it's only, it's only figurative, but if you can take it literally voluminously, amongst millions, very rare one seeks the truth, seeks self-realization, seeks perfection. Maybe when this was written, it was uh, thousands, now it has become million. May it may become billion also. <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually say billions also. <laughs> no, no, true. That, that's the, uh, but the, the, the spirit of which we get is first half of the verse applies to general humanity. In fact, don't we learn in the Viveka Chudamani, there's a mention, the proportion of a human vis-a-vis -vis to be born as any other living being. To be born as a human by itself, you should have done extraordinary tapas. You have already paid the price of having evolved from something which is just crawling to something which has evolved to a, a developed species to be born as a human being, which is the most complex of all living beings. Isn't it? That by itself, one is to infinite. And then the second half applies to the spiritual seekers. So the second half applies to all of us. The first half doesn't apply to us. In fact, applies to us in the sense, doesn't apply we, we, we don't belong to this of those who don't seek. So we are, each one can say, oh yes, I can congratulate myself that I am seeking, I'm seeking the self. Isn't it Ramji? The first half, each of us can pat our backs and say, yes, I am not amongst the masses. Yes, Guru. Namaste Guru. We can pat ourselves on the back that we are seeking, provided we are sincere about seeking. Uh, I mean, uh, like you always say that uh, you are here, but is your mind here? Is also a question, right? I so, at least, sir, at least make me believe that your mind is here. I know. No, I'm saying among us also. Uh. You see, uh, there is always uh, when you say you are talking of perfection because. When we say perfection, mm. uh, everybody cannot be perfect. So I think, but yes, we are all making the effort to in that journey. Indeed, indeed. But as you also rightly say that the first half, we all can say that we all understand uh, the purpose of life. What is the purpose of life? To seek the higher, seek self-realization. Yeah. Seek, which is, and how do you say that? How do you say it is the very purpose of life? How would you convince a lay person that is the purpose of life? Perhaps, sir, if perhaps it's not you need to convince me, nor do you need to convince anybody on, in this platform. But let's say each of you are given a challenge to find someone out there. It could be a family member, it could be a colleague, your friend or someone out there to convince them into this path. How would you convince them? that this is the very purpose of life. And considering that person is a rational person, and if you can make sense and convince him, what would be your arguments? Is my question rational enough, sir? Yeah, yeah very much. Only I'm not able to find the answer. So I have to still think about the answer. Because, uh, you know, I think um, when we give such uh, arguments, we have to look at the person. Uh, what stage and what what state of mind the person is in and then uh, construct arguments accordingly. If it is a young person, then uh, we'll have to talk to him about how this uh, is the, um, um, this is the philosophy of life. So you have a lot of life in front of you. So this will help you to lead your life uh, properly and in a way that uh, you will uh, be able to move in the direction of um, attaining the higher goals, right? So instead of going through stress and strains of life. So that could be something like a uh, thing we can talk about. But if you are already in your middle age and then you are in the thick of your, um, you know, all the difficulties of uh, the world and the family and then you're, you're on the path of earning money and then 
glory and then everything you are pursuing you are in that rajasic state uh, thick rajasic state then i think we'll have to use different arguments we'll have to talk to him about uh, him or her about the benefits of uh, doing that rajasic thing with with the sense of sacrifice and service uh, which will bring him greater so i think again i said the, that all these things will make a lot of uh, they have to be tweaked they have to be adjusted to the mental state of the person who is receiving it if we talk to him when he is in a condition to receive the message properly then i think he will receive it but conversion rate yes will be very less if somebody is at our age after 60 not your age but our age after 60 then it is much thank easier you. to convince uh, thank you for the clarification <laughs> then it is much easier to convince because you have already uh, you know uh, done whatever you have to do in the world and then then it is much easier to but uh, that is not the right thing to do that's what uh, i am trying to say that we have to convince the youngsters more am i off target completely no no in fact uh... i am actually speechless because there's nothing left to say <laughs> so that is my challenge you know I'm sometimes uh, i come with little preparation and then there's nothing more for me to say you know so uh, it is very very pertinent point you know it is very important that you strike a chord with whom you are dialoguing or whom you are trying to convey this message but it is rather um, very difficult to convince another person that self realization is the very purpose yeah. you are born the purpose you are born you know and and everything that you are seeking in fact indirectly you are actually seeking the self so it's not to have philosophical arguments there's endless list of arguments you can present and you are given a few insights into it and we can endlessly do it but it it's very difficult in fact during the course of uh, me sharing this knowledge you you it really uh, i have experienced uh, uh, how it had uh, truly impacted lives of young people you know and uh, it changed the whole course of their life you know but unless and until you are receptive it's not easy to yeah uh, receive this knowledge and one of the things that makes you receptive is the knocks and shocks of life mm-hmm. absolutely uh, the the knocks and shocks of life makes you a little receptive to this idea so i think the the situation everybody is subjected through the pandemic and the insecurity the loneliness and having lost the normalcy of life have actually drawn people to question why are they going through what they're going through isn't it hmm? yep that's true. right perfect ji but on, but on your uh, just one more comment uh, guruji yes sir on yes. somebody calling you yoga teacher i think it is you are you are actually yoga teacher yoga as defined in bhagavad gita but yoga as understood in the world today is all physical exercises no so that is a different yoga but uh, okay. you are actually teaching us yoga how to become a yogi is what you are you are teaching us absolutely <laughs> very true <laughs> correct uh, very true very very true so the first half yes we all have turned to the truth of those who strive and succeed scarce one knows me in essence so of the people who seek the truth how many people first of all as we said to be born as a human being is a rarity of the people who are born as a human to seek the spiritual path is a minority and those who seek the truth how many of them have the what they call as purushatvam how many have that exploratory nature is very rare of those who have that purushatvam that nature to explore 
to conquer, to get into the unknown. How many of them have got a sattvic nature? I said, first of all, to be born as a human being is rare. Then I said, having born as a human being, how many of them seek the spiritual path itself is very rare. The third, we said, how many of those who seek the spiritual path, how many of them have this purushatvam, the urge to explore the unknown? Fourth, of them, again, it becomes a, a percentage of those who are actually sattvic in nature. Amongst the people who are born as a human, who are seeking the truth, who have this purushatvam, who have sattvic nature, how many of them are actually consistent in their path? Again, the percentage drops further. Of those who are having a consistency in their purpose, how many of them have got the right guru? How many of them have got the right teaching? Again, the percentage drops because there is chalk and cheese among the gurus. One thing. Second thing is the guru may be the right a right person, but he may not be the right person for you. Like you can't, I, I may not be a right guru for a, a devotional person. I am giving you knowledge. I may not be able to give you bhakti. So am I the right guru for you? If you are looking for bhakti and devotion, I may not be the right teacher for you. So how many of them have got the right teacher, the right teachings? I take all this into possibility. Scarce indeed is one who actually reaches the absolute goal of realization, which is a very depressing feeling. So one in a generation actually would reach that self. One in a generation. Considering it is the birthright, only one in a generation reaches that goal of self-realization. Nobody is interested. Sadly, nobody is interested. Yes, Hariji? Hariyum. Guruji, I have a doubt. When they say strive and succeed in the hmm. translation, what do they mean by succeed? Succeed what? And then after that, they can scarce one knows me in a sense. Succeed in striving. Yeah, 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 yeah strive and succeed. That Again, means that's what I'm I saying. have achieved. Uh, no, succeeded in striving. They have done okay. well enough in the journey. Okay. But they have not done that well enough that they reached the goal of realization. Okay. Okay. See, they have done well enough to get onto the spiritual path. They have done okay. well enough that they have embarked on this journey. But then thereafter, they have, they have missed the... Uh, the flight. They missed the opportunity of attaining the ultimate goal. Okay. 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 Thank you. Right. But having said that, one of the most satisfying thing of the path about the pursuit is the very pursuit itself. One of the most satisfying thing of the pursuit is the very pursuit itself. It is not in as much as reaching the goal, but as much as in striving to reach the goal. So all the text is appealing to us is 
can you claim to strive to reach that perfection? Like I have no qualms in telling people I am striving to reach self-realization. So much so I'm glad people are introducing me to people and say he wants to reach self-realization. It's like saying I am a mountaineer and everybody says, oh, he's training to reach the Mount Everest. Correct, huh? He is training very seriously to actually scale the Mount Everest. He wants to reach the peak of Mount Everest. That's a very, even amongst those who are trekking, how many would want to reach that peak of Everest? So this is the, after 30 years of my sadhana, at least people are trying to identify me, identify me by saying that he wants to reach self-realization. So I have come some way, I have progressed, I must say. Yesterday evening, Situji was introducing me like this. Correct, Situji? Very much. Yeah. So, there should, what that's the point I'm saying is, you should not, how many of you can feel proud that you are inspired to reach the goal of self-realization. At least there is no harm in telling yourself, I am not content with anything I have. I want to reach the goal of realization. There's no harm, isn't it? Okay, is there any harm in letting our thoughts run high to that goal and embrace it and keep asserting it in every walk of the way? Can we not do that? Should we not do that? Why should we not do that? Why should we be complacent with, with compromising for anything less than the goal of realization? Even for the sake of discussion, we should say, I want to reach that goal of realization. So tomorrow, if I'm introducing you, I would say, he, is reach, he wants to reach the goal of realization. How satisfying it is to hear that, I tell you, it's very satisfying. Rather than me telling you, telling about me that he wants to reach self-realization is very satisfying. Not that it is a, you're patting on my back, but it has obviously resonated in some way to you. I'm sure you've heard about it more than once from me, isn't it? If you find it apt to describe. Now, why is it important to at least say so? Because this is the law of attachment, remember. The law of attachment is as you think, so you become. You keep talking of the goal of realization every step of the way, every walk of the way, whether you're doing gardening, whether you're doing walking, whether you're playing a sport, whether you're whining or dining, whatever you're doing, if you keep telling yourself that I'm doing this for self-realization, for self-realization, for self-realization, yeah invariably every thought you entertain will become instrumental in defining you what you are as you think so you become so there is no harm to at least start by telling it through the lips as they say if you want to give, at least physically start giving. You may give cursing these beggars. You first thing in the morning, these fellows, you know, let's say some days you have to uh, be on the roads early in the morning. Let's say at six o'clock you're on the streets and you find at six o'clock you find there's a beggar. And I have known people cursing the beggars early in the morning. First thing in the morning, I have to look at your face. And yet they grudgingly give five rupees or 10 rupees. They give. At least they have done well that at least they're giving. Physically, mechanically they're doing. Then comes a point where their heart starts giving. So let us go through the ritual of at least mechanically saying. Gayatri Ma, what are you supposed to say mechanically? 
My goal is for self-realization. My goal is for self-realization. Jnanam, Teham, Savijnanam. A guru gives you knowledge and wisdom. Adhikaga, I told, repeat second time. Two times you said that. Adha manana is going on. Isn't it? So, if we can start, uh, okay, before this, have you said this before, Ma? Anywhere? We have not said that, but I always feel that I want moksha. Oh, that, you know, Panasi, you know, correct. Correct. So, there is at least we all will start through the mechanical aspect of it by repeating it mechanically. And somewhere down the line, we will develop a connect to that seemingly innocuous state or the phrase of realization. And it will become the main drive force of us to get there. So, at least to get into that sight that as you think, so you become, you know, okay. Now, whom to ask this? I, I want to ask, I'm, I'm intentionally asking in a very cheeky attitude. Please forgive me. Prakash Ragaru. Forgive me for asking you, sir. Yes. Sir, have you seen this uh, boxing match? No, sir. What is this, sir? We both should go for a boxing match, sir. Or not yet seen. Not yet seen. Okay. Uh, and I don't guess? like it. In fact, I don't like that match. Correct, I, yeah. I also don't like, sir. I, not that I sit and watch. But it just to drive, drive home the point. There's a point I'm trying to drive home. You know, before any major clash between the two top uh, boxers, let's say, no? And there's a build-up before, there's a titan clash between the two top boxers in the world. Uh, and they get, I don't know, what do you call this? They get these belts, this golden, what do you call the belts? Ramji? He seemed, he was nodding the head, that's why I'm asking him. No, Guru, I don't know their name. They, they, they have this belt. huge, I not know. black, black belt is for karate and all, but they I have know, this huge belts they have. Okay, Correct. now what, what I am trying to get Prakash Rao Garu is, uh, before the match, much before they have these interviews, media interviews, and can you guess what they will tell, what they say in the interview? They want to win. Each fellow wants to win. Each fellow wants to win. In fact, the language they will use is, I'm going to pulverize you. I'm going to break your bones. I'm going to win in the very first round itself. I'm going to be the champion. These are the kinds of language they use. Not vulgar, but they are trying to psych themselves up so much that when the actual event happens, what happens? They are so... They are charged up. They are very charged, isn't it? If an athlete is trying to compete at the international level, what kind of preparation and thought processes go in? The coaches keep psyching them up, that making them believe that you have it in you to win it. You have that capacity, the potential, and they keep pushing you, isn't it? Yes. In the same way, the attempt is to make you consider that your life has only one purpose, that is realization. And at least for the sake of saying, what is the purpose of life, Prakash Raghuru? For self-realization. Correct. Again, can you tell, sir? Self-realization. Ah, very loud and clear. So even after the class, you can tell your family. Keep saying self-realization. Self-realization. My purpose of life is mamadharma. 
I want to know my dharma. What is my truth, the self? Let them also hear about it. Any harm, sir? No. No harm at all. Absolutely. Very good, sir. You seem to know a lot more, sir. You told you don't watch any match, but you told everything about that boxing match. Regarding boxing, I didn't tell everything, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just borrowing a lot of that sentiment or spirit from that. Thank you, sir. Jibbi uh, Karagaru, uh, when you raised your hand, you were in the office. Now you are on the move. If I don't give you thing, you might reach the goal of realization. You will reach, you know, sir. I only said literally, figuratively. You have literally, you have literally started your journey to realization. This is very unfair, sir. Are you on, Guruji? Are you on? Are you on? Are you on? Because Arion. today is Teachers' Day. Right. Is this day? It is a. Uh, want to go? The Teacher's Day. Irani Kashpa wants that he to be educated in teachers. Given the all instructions how to bring him out uh, as a student. Then uh, when he came there, inspection one day. So he asked his son, "What you learned?" Sarvidi to Sarvidi, Marmamu ani ani Marmamu the the essence of the what we said, the essence of the life. That is what I know. Then he started Ariyo. Imagine He doesn't want to hear a name at all. Are you able to hear me? You are able to hear me, sir? It is little disturbed, actually. The, 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 ah, because uh, on the travel. So. No problem. Right. Yeah. I think... Uh, Rahlata, hmm. You are able to hear now? Yes. Prahlada, he says that I learned all the education, but I learned the essence of the what is the life. That is, then he is he's talking that uh, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Hari Hari. Then he annoyed so much that I sent him to this place, teacher, to not to name the Vishnu, but he is uh, chanting only Vishnu. Right. That is the he tested so much on him throwing in fire and throwing from the mountains. Still, he has got that power, which you know. To once he reached that stage, that only Vishnu is the ultimate. Bhagwan is the ultimate. But he will take care of everything. If that is able to face any eventualities, any type of impossible to the life to continue the way it's tested with the poisonous and all silly Correct. came out. That shows that self-realization at the childhood, not some only after 60 years. It should start from the childhood that is where it, it is the ultimate the human enrichment at the, to reach the moksha. That is what uh, teaches day is the essence of Prahlada's story. To you. Right. Yes. Appreciate. Thank you. I think there's a uh, there's still a disturbance. You know, we will have to leave it at that. You no. Know? Okay, but uh, okay. I will I will uh, reiterate uh, for the point you are making. Uh, I think Jibikara, what he was trying to tell is of the the grandeur of the thought of seeking the self and being attuned to the self, which is exemplary through the life of the great young boy, Prahalada. How Prahalada thought of Narayana, Narayana, Narayana in every aspect of his life. And thereafter, any eventuality he actually crossed, there was no challenge that ever overpowered him uh, and it is actually very uh, powerfully portrayed what it is to be overwhelmed with the thought of realization. I think that's what uh, GBKG wanted to share. All right. Yeah, Tinkima, you also wanted to clarify something? Yes, please. Adiyo, Guruji. Happy Teacher's yes, Day to you. 
गोल so that is a very you know it's a double edged sword that i'm enjoying yes. it i i find it satisfying fulfilling but then what happens to the goal second one is that you said you must keep on saying or thinking that i want to reach the goal of self realization because of law of attachment but i remember that i had this conversation with you in class some months ago where i did say that you know that is our goal and you had said all of us in this class please forget about it you first only focus on the three yogas then you think about self purification then you do your uh, that is for self pure then you do your shravana and your manana then you reach nididhyasana then you will reach the next level so that is very far fetched uske upar aap you keep it somewhere there ke wahan pahunchna hai mount everest but at this point if you keep thinking of that no you have to focus on this so now this is a contradiction of what was then said i didn't understand now should we do this or should we do that sorry right uh, the, the the first question firstly when i said that the very pursuit is very satisfying now it is not meant in the sense that you get attached to the very path itself it is not intended to use the path or the pursuit as an end in itself it was not said in that sense now the pursuit should never be an end in itself the path is always the means but what gives us satisfaction is not the result but the effort so in that sense it was said that the pursuit or the path or the effort is the most satisfying experience the sadhana itself is the most satisfying thing it's not in as much as reaching the goal but the satisfaction is in striving to reach the goal so it is not getting stuck in the path but the very effort gives you the great satisfaction because the opposite of that is if you don't do your sadhana there will be enormous guilt isn't it the guilt comes in so when we say that the sadhana has to be enjoyed we are talking about an example is uh, where you also enjoy the journey as uh, rightly shivaji said you know that you enjoy the journey and also you reach the right destination it's not that the journey has to be treacherous and troublesome and then you reach the goal of destination of bliss or enlightenment no no the very journey itself becomes a, a beautiful revelation you are revealing your uh, the inner self the unfoldment of the inner self itself is a joyful experience until you realize the self okay ma that's point 1 yeah. the second point is you asked in in another context i said that we should be realistic in our efforts rather than merely entertaining a goal which is unrealistic okay now when we say that in the context in the given context we are only trying to psych ourselves that am i inspired by this goal it's only to psych you up that's about all and that's why i took the example of these sportsmen and how they psych themselves up they they are they are made to believe that you have it in you that you can win the gold or you can re- re- reach the finals and win the championship it is very uh negative feeling to get into any tournament that i am not going to go beyond the first round or the second round it's a very uh unhealthy feeling is it as a sportsman so you play the sport you want to get into the tournament believing that you can win so that's the kind of a psych which was being trying to instill but not to 
make it unrealistic no no not at all so i don't see it in a that it's any contradiction but it is just a, a different context okay thank you yeah yes so we have to keep that uh, that goal that it is there that's where i need to get but unless i don't do a b c d e i cannot get there so my focus Correct. should be on this for what for self realization therefore as we are saying means. also self realization correct as a means. So, yeah as a means okay yeah right. now when i say that the means is as powerful as the goal the path or the journey is as powerful as the goal what is the path we're talking about i'm referring to the 17th chapter of the gita there's a beautiful mention of the most auspicious action an action is most auspicious when you have these three elements in an action the three elements in an action are yajna dana tapa the three essential elements in an action are yajna dana tapa yajna means sacrifice dana means charity tapa means austerity so every action must have these three essential elements ushama what are the three essential elements namaste guru ji uh, yajna dana and tapa what is yajna is uh, is it sacrifice sacrifice and charity and austerity sacrifice charity and austerity and when you perform these three it constitutes an auspicious action and when this is done the 17th chapter says when you perform actions of these this is sat the sanskrit word sat means this is the reality that's the interesting thing the interesting point to note is in 17th chapter he says this is sat and the sanskrit word sat means the reality so by performing actions with yajna dana tapa is leading you towards the path towards the reality so if you do not do this it is asat you are not leading a life of truth you are not leading yourself to truth or the self now i hope you understand the context the context i'm saying is the path or the means itself is most satisfying the path is as powerful or as good as the goal and what is the path or the means the path or means is when your action becomes auspicious and what are the three ingredients which make your action auspicious yajna dana tapa yajna is to perform actions with the spirit of sacrifice dana is to do charity tapa is to practice austerity now just for your reference you can fall back from verses 11 to 13 he talks of yajna 17th chapter chapter 17 verses 11 to 13 he talks of yajna verses 20 to 22 he talks of dana charity verses 14 to 19 he talks of austerity so 11 to 13 is sacrifice 20 to 22 is charity and 14 to 19 is austerity perhaps if it requires we can go through this some day just these sections but just for your reference you can go through that and performing these actions is reality here yeah, this is the language of the airport 
the airport language, the aircraft language. Let's say there are a series of aircrafts and the, the dialogue among the people who are managing the passengers. And if they're pointing to a particular aircraft, they point to a particular aircraft and say, that is Istanbul. They'll point to this aircraft, this is Paris. And that is Dubai. Huh? For a moment, you're confused. He will say, this is Istanbul, that is Paris, this is Dubai. What does it mean? Jashima, what does it mean? Don't tell me I never boarded an aircraft. All that is not accepted. It shows the different direction. No, no. He is only pointing to the aircraft. There are five aircrafts along next to each other. They are parked on the tarmac. So many ways, different ways. So many paths. Hmm. No. No problem. No problem. But you're not wrong. In your own way, you're right. Sudhakarji, the airport language, sir. The... Don't ask me. You don't ask me this question, sir. When did you work as a, as a staff in the airport? You know, I have never worked in any airport. I, 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 I will never ask you this at all. <laughs> it shows the destination of the airplane is to Dubai, Paris, and Istanbul. The destination, means the, the indication so, for the correct. So when they say this is Istanbul, it means the the fact that you board the flight is as good as you are in Istanbul, yes. isn't it? Correct. So the board you board this flight, you are as good as in Paris. You board this flight, you are as good as in Dubai. So the destination is so the so the the journey is as good as the destination. So the path is as good as the goal. So if you want to reach the auspicious goal, you ensure the path also is auspicious. Isn't it? You want to reach the auspicious goal of self-realization. How should be the path? The path also must be as auspicious as the goal. And Shivaji, what is it that makes the path auspicious? In fact, it is as good as a goal. It has to be auspicious. And moreover, I just want to ask you, how many of us, of us want moksha in this Janma? Only two people have raised that. When, are, when is that we are uh, going I mean, to... After said that, people are raising. That's not allowed. First, <laughs> first question you must raise. And uh, do we know that when is our this life is going to come to an end? Yes, sir. No one knows. Uh, the point now, is we need to seek the moksha this moment, every moment, every minute as we live Amma. by. Amma. It cannot be. We can't postpone it. One, one day we will reach after 60, 70, 80. Correct. Chalta. Chalta. Correct. Every Correct. minute, every moment, every minute we live in that moment, we end to its entirety, we are in moksha. We enjoy this moment, bliss is here right now, every moment, you are in moksha. Not after I, we do not know after I die. Is there anyone who knows they have seen moksha? Is there anybody who has seen who is a self-realized person? And a self-realized one does not say I am self-realized. If he says, it may not be true. It is not true, may not have not. Only the possibility is now this moment, as we are in this session, as we go out and have our lunch, in every moment, as long as we live in that, you seek that moksha, you are definitely in the path of moksha. In fact, Ramana Maharishi says, it is not a talk to be discussed. You are definitely attaining moksha. Then you are sure to attain moksha. Sir, it is, is simple. It is is there, if, you, if, if you had told this one hour ago, I would not have spent one hour on this. No, sir. And now you are telling it. <laughs> it is. If had, it, uh, we don't have strive for it. It is Correct. there, you taken for granted and work, walk in the path. Simple. If you strive for it, it's going ahead of you. It's not going. 
it's already there you are born only to attain that you are given such a beautiful aridu aridu maridanai perapadu aridu rare rare that you have to have taken the the human form the whole thing of, that you have taken a human form is only to attain salvation it is within your it's your birth right correct sir it is not to be you don't have struggle there's no struggle in it it's only it's enjoy enjoy as this session gives us the light enjoy every moment of it we are in the path absolutely no doubt there is no one who is going to miss the bus at the end of the day we are all going to kick the bucket there is no doubt as long as we enjoy and moksha is not the next janma not to be striven the next janma this janma and every given opportunity that's i think my take i don't know to what extent i make sense but i that's what i think makes sense for anybody it's not that i have to postpone it till i attain a age or what it is at not every all. given not opportunity hari om sir hari om sir no no just to uh, bring you to the connect Which, i connected with you we said that you can reach the auspicious goal only when your action is auspicious Stop. and whatever you said in the right spirit and sentiment is apt and perfect no, nothing to take away anything from what you said but just to repeat what was explained or just referred to a little earlier an auspicious goal is reached only when you make your action auspicious now what is it that makes your action auspicious when you are in it when you do it with that kind of a what are the three things which makes your action auspicious which makes it sat yeah the One three is... things are hmm tapa Solo. tapaha tapaha um charity that is tapaha no no tapaha is austerity austerity the last yeah one is tapaha and um, yagna charity yagya yagya charity dana. and tapaha yeah. dana yeah. and tapaha correct so yagna dana tapaha so if we inject these three essential principles into any action you are leading the life of sat you are in the path of reality and such actions are satisfying perfect shivaji so this this is what was meant thinking ma when we say that satisfying we meant that when your actions are performed with these three the path is as good as the goal the airport language you board that flight you get to that goal yeah thinking ma Uh, so guru ji this is action but action comes from thought suppose i my action is okay i'm you know very careful about how what i am doing suppose something happens which triggers my mind i get agitated or i get angry but then i remember in the nick of time that at least the thought has come but i should not express it so the action maybe is not uh, you know agitated or action is not asat it's not inauspicious but what about the thought which is there and maybe just buried and it may later come out and burst as a volcano as good as asat so having an angry thought is also asat yes but thoughts just arise what do you do so see once the thought has come it's come now i can't do anything okay it's a a, a breeze came i can't stop it i can maybe redirect the thought and i can pause and think okay don't be angry they it's coming from his or her vasana or whatever but the thought just comes see it comes because of your purva karma which is your vasanas which has a certain root so it keeps sprouting but with your intellect with your alertness with your awareness with the sadhana you can ensure that it doesn't come and disturb your present 
so it if it comes it's okay but doesn't disturb me uh, it should not come ideally it should not come it should not come yeah but it just comes. because so the when, why it, why it comes is because it has a root vavasana but yeah. i it's ideally necessary. speaking the moment let's say the thought surfaces you should be alert to nip it in the bud so don't allow that to mount into any emotion which is silently perceived only by you others yeah. may not know what's going on within you but even silently it should not be perceived that means with inwardly there is a a frustration or an anger or or remorse that should not be there so whatever is inside is going to manifest basic i mean it will at least be there and i should not allow i should just nip it basically so if, if 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 i if i harbor a negative feeling but but i if i don't exhibit that feeling i am a hypocrite isn't it yeah so rather be be true to myself and de- get done with it or deal with it than trying to camouflage it and trying to be something else how about if that thought comes whether it's anger remorse guilt any negative thing and suppose it is caused by x how about that because one is i don't want to repress suppress but i also need to uproot it or to deal with it so that it's over if we if you talk to x about it that you know this is the thing that causes agitation or which i don't is that a form of sat or again asat because you're doing it with your intellect with the intention that but of course you're expecting other person to behave the way you want which is difficult for them to do thank you <laughs> because you made it easier for me your question you gave answer also you gave so it, uh... it suddenly dawned you see the thought suddenly came what can i do <laughs> that's why i said thank thank you to you okay because nothing was com- coming in my head how to answer it and you immediately helped me by answering yourself therefore i said thank you okay ma we are talking sat in an idealistic sense so when we we are talking about integrating these qualities of yajna dana tapa in one's action we may not be able to do it in its entirety at least our awareness is to inject these three principles maybe since there's so much we mentioned of it perhaps next week when we come we will fall back on these verses if you can do a little research and fall back on read these verses chapter 17 11 to 13 20 to 22 and 14 to 19 i'll give you a birds eye view as to what these three are so that we can integrate it because by the time we get to these verses maybe a, a long while away okay so we'll i will talk of this uh, so that we get a a little perspective insight into what these three qualities are but it's a fascinating chapter an outstanding concept we'll come to it okay perhaps next week when we are fresh i'll i'll go through it okay uh, before we conclude i think uh, gopal krishnan ji wants to say something yes sir please namaskar guru ji namaskar sir i have a small doubt see uh, you are talking about uh, you know living in moment and then you have every moment you keep thinking that i am striving to reach uh, you know self realization and so on and uh, there is another way of putting it uh, you know the same thing maybe is that you know the the whole thing the whole universe and the whole earth and human beings and myself everything was created by parmatma and every event that is happening is again created by uh, is being guided by and directed by parmatma and every thought i'm getting is also uh, guided by i mean rather uh, given by parmatma so if you keep thinking that everything that is happening around is by parmatma and in the consciousness of that parmatma all the time uh, we don't we don't have any goals to reach we don't have anything to strive but we keep doing as per we keep remembering as per parmatma's guidance things are happening and i am doing it i am thinking doing and all that 
is this the right thing or you uh, have a target you know i am what was characterization you know everything i am doing is self realization this point you know this word target you know our destination our you know direction keeping a goal uh, somehow it looks little uh, heavy on the head am <laughs> i <laughs> yeah so am i right uh, i mean how is it like a little confused <laughs> no see i think the 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 principle is the same what you're talking but why there is an apparent uh, different in line of thought is what you're presenting is a, a devotional attitude a person with bhakti or devotion would say everything is lord's grace whatever is happening it's his prasad he is the creator his creation i am i am i am just a mere instrument in his creation so there is nothing for me to get to everything is 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 happening through his grace so that is a, a, an attitude of devotion and surrender a bhakta would look at it but when you talk of action when you talk of uh, the goal this is the element of gnanam and karma because karma is action you need to be action oriented and how to ensure the action takes me to the goal is to how do i embellish my action so what kind of actions takes me to the right goal this is the proportion of knowledge and karma that comes in but all three whether you take the approach of bhakti or through gnanam or karma all ultimately is going to reach you to the same goal but nobody is entirely devotional so if one is devotional and says it's all his prasad and i i i humbly accept and i am nothing so through the process you are liquidating your ego you are totally surrendering to the to the lord's creation his his plan even that is acceptable there's nothing wrong you know but nobody is purely like that so to the extent you need these elements to integrate you will have to accept it we we'll have to uh, integrate i would say so, but there's nothing wrong to fine. think that way okay no everything is fine only one small aspect in the whole thing is there is a element of i coming in that in that you know i am doing it i have to do it i see the element of i is there no so that's the confusion no uh, see the as long as the sadhak has not attained moksha there is this jiva there is this individuality so the shastras and the gita repeatedly tells one should put in that self effort nirantara abhyasa not just occasional abhyasa but constant practice so the jiva the individual has to strive to evolve so when that nirantara abhyasa the practice is being put in there has to be no ahankar in it so therefore there has to be that essential component of bhakti as you rightly integrated injected bhakti it is not that i am achieving anything or i am doing anything but end of the day as a practitioner it has to be i have to get down onto my knees i have to put in the effort so the individual effort is being highlighted but that doesn't mean it's being egoistic or arrogant because i can't delegate my spiritual transformation to you can i do that sir can i say gopal krishnan ji you are very sweet can you can you do a little sadhana for me also please i can't do that can i or vice versa can you do that you can't so if i have to evolve there has to be the effort the the individual has to put in an individual has to put in the effort that he doesn't develop a hankar about it the effort is to ensure that you are humble so you 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 embrace inject all these elements whether be it bhakti whether be it karma or gnanam so that it results in your spiritual growth yeah thank you okay? yeah thank you most welcome right sir thank you we'll come back to it om 
ಪೂರ್ಣಮದೂರ್ನಮುದ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ